In the first chapter of High Yield Ethics, we are going to discuss core ethical principles. Now, when we talk about the core ethical principles, what we are really referring to are the four guiding fundamental principles in all of medical ethics. Those four principles are autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. Let's go through these one at a time and define them individually. First, autonomy refers to allowing patients to be the agents of their own care. Simply stated, autonomy basically means that patients decide what happens to their body throughout all of healthcare. Autonomy is also the ethical principle invoked when obtaining informed consent. And we'll define this and discuss informed consent in much greater detail in a future lesson. But basically right now, informed consent is the ability to give a patient information, tell them about the risks, benefits, alternatives, and indications, and then ask them, what is your decision? And in doing so, we basically give the patient the autonomy or the power to make their own decision. Now, autonomy respects the patient's right to refuse treatment. And it's important to understand that their right to refuse treatment is oftentimes the wrong personal decision. So if a patient makes a decision that they do not want to undergo a cardiac catheterization despite the recommendation of their physician, even though that puts them potentially at greater risk of death, it is their right to refuse. And the core principle of autonomy respects the patient's right to refuse. It respects the patient's right to make a bad decision. And lastly, autonomy may only be limited if it poses an immediate and identifiable risk to another person. Now, the way to remember autonomy is looking at the word itself. Auto means self. The prefix auto means self. And autonomy is the ability to be in charge of the self. That's the first core ethical principle. Now let's talk about beneficence. Beneficence refers to acting in the best interest of the patient. And oftentimes on USMLE or Comlex, you may find a question where beneficence is at odds with autonomy. Let's do an example to illustrate this and talk about how you should navigate these questions. Here's the example. A 64-year-old obese male with type 2 diabetes mellitus is brought to the emergency department complaining of foot pain. Doppler ultrasound reveals drastically diminished blood flow to the extremity. Physical exam reveals extensive wet gangrene and the limb is determined to be incapable of repair. An amputation is recommended and the patient is educated regarding the indications, risks, benefits, and alternatives to treatment. The patient, after healing, hearing all of this information and being deemed to have capacity, refuses treatment. So what's the problem in this example? The problem is that autonomy is at odds with beneficence. So in this example, the patient is refusing treatment, and that's their autonomy. They have the right to determine their own health care needs and what happens to their body. Now this, the ability of the patient to make the decision is at odds with what the physician recommends, and that's what's in the best interest of the patient. So what the patient wants, which is their autonomy, is at odds with what the physician recommends, that's their beneficence, because that would be in the best interest of the patient. Now the question is, when you encounter this scenario on USMLE, Comlex, or perhaps even in real life, what should the physician do when these two ethical principles are at odds. Well, step one is you should empathetically identify. Tell the patient that you see they have some apprehension. One of the best strategies in navigating this issue is identifying the emotions or the problems that the patient is having. Step two, provide information. Educate the patient about the indication, risks, benefits, and alternatives to treatment. In this step, you are, obtain, you are attempting to obtain informed consent. So you are providing the patient with all of the information that they need to either agree or refuse to treatment. Step three, attempt to understand. So assuming that the patient refuses, which will be the situation on USMLE or Comlex most likely, 
ask the patient how they arrived at this decision, and then, assuming again that they refused, evaluate their capacity to refuse treatment. Step four, empathetically reassure. After all of these steps have been done, tell the patient that you respect their decision. Again, the patient has the right to make the wrong choice. The patient has the right to make a healthcare decision that the physician does not agree with, but that the physician needs to respect, assuming that the patient was given all of the information and indeed has capacity. So if I were going to restate these four steps in a very, very easy to remember four word statement that would help you remember what to do when autonomy and beneficence are at odds, it would be identify, inform, understand, and respect. Now let's talk about non-maleficence. Non-maleficence refers to doing no harm. This is what the layperson imagines in their head when they see physicians taking the Hippocratic Oath, right? Agreeing to do no harm. Non-maleficence may be at odds with either autonomy or beneficence. And let's do a case study here to illustrate this. A 21-year-old male is involved in a motor vehicle collision. He is brought to the emergency department where he codes three times. Return of spontaneous circulation is achieved, but the patient must be placed on a ventilator. The patient is later determined to be brain dead. The physician informs the patient's family, who are the patient's legal decision makers, that in her professional opinion, life-sustaining measures should be withdrawn. The patient's family objects to the withdrawal of the ventilator. So what's the issue in this example? Well, there are three things that are at odds with one another here. First, autonomy, or the patient's family being his legal decision maker, their decision is at odds with beneficence, which again is the physician's recommendation, or what she believes is in the best interest of the patient. But also, there is an element of non-maleficence here that's at odds as well, because although the physician recommends in her professional opinion that life-sustaining measures be withdrawn, she must consider that in withdrawing those life-sustaining measures and allowing the patient to pass away, there is an element of doing no harm that she must consider. So although she's not harming the patient per se, she, mu she might feel like the withdrawal of the ventilator or the withdrawal of the life-sustaining measures creates this element of harm. So we have at odds here three core principles, autonomy, beneficence, and non-maleficence. And it is up to the ethical physician to weigh these ethical principles in arriving at the best course of action. Let's wrap up the core principles by talking about the fourth core principle, justice. Justice refers to treating all patients fairly, equally, and equitably. It requires that the physician considers fair and equitable distribution of resources and also that the physician treats patients in the context of the competing needs of patients. And in order to better understand the term justice, we need to understand the difference between the term health equity and health inequality, because these do not mean the same thing. Health equality refers to the same healthcare offerings for everybody. So for example, as patients walk into the emergency department, regardless of who they are, where they come from, their cultural, sexual, or religious backgrounds or orientations, they all get asked the same screening questions. That's equality. But equity refers to giving patients what that patient needs to achieve that patient's best healthcare outcome. So the difference here is that health equity considers distributive social justice because it tries to prop patients up to give that individual patient what that individual patient needs to achieve their best healthcare outcome. And the way that I simplify this and think about this more clearly is that the difference between equality and equity is what you see on this slide. So equality treats everybody equally, no matter what, but equity considers distributive social justice in that it tries to prop patients up to give that patient 
what that patient needs to achieve their best healthcare outcome.